Hello and welcome, this is Kara. In my last video, I showed you this little journal that I made with the five items from Cory Dahman. And I also made a similar one. And this video is a little bit more uh, tutorial uh, based than the other one. This one I was kind of just figuring it out as I went. And today's video, I'm gonna kind of show you how I put this together. So stay tuned and we'll make one of these together. Let me show you kind of the, the basics on how to make the same thing. So any tag or card or um, cardstock, scrapbook paper will work. These are still kind of drying because I just did my inking. And for the inking, I just take my, my glass mat and, and I smush, spray some water, and then I smush these down. I'm sure you've seen that before or watched Tim Holtz, you know, on his Saturday mornings. So then you can take and, you know, I can arrange these front and back. So some of them have text on the front. And then with the fabric, so this is, I mean, you could go as wide as one and a half, but it's pretty close to one and a quarter. And then it's not quite six inches, but it'll work. So six inches would have been perfect. And then I'm gonna cut approximately one inch strips. Let me show you why. So then this will be what we glue on here for the hinge of the little book. And it would have been fun too if I would have inked this up and then these would have been grungy as well. I didn't. I thought of it after I put everything away and I thought, oh, <laughs> I think I should have done that. All right, so now we're gonna glue these on. This is gonna be my front cover, like this one over here. Get the sorry silk out of the way. And you'll see how this flips to this page. So, this is gonna be my front. And then if we want this to be the front, right? Cause we want it to alternate from text to no text. Then we're gonna go like this. Does that make sense? So we want this up and this up. And then we're gonna just glue it. And we wanna make sure that there is a little bit of a gap in between the two cards so that when we fold it, there's enough space. I can go this way or I could go this way. I think I'm gonna go this way just to give it a little more stability. So I'm just going just a smidge. And then I do kind of want these to line up so that if I wanted to stand it up, at, you know, to display it, that it would stand. So I kind of want that to be kind of flat on the bottom. And then we'll glue this one on like that. And so then this will flip like this for my first page. And then we're gonna move on to the next one. And again, I want the text up because I kind of want it to alternate. But really it would just depend on if you're using scrapbook paper or directional paper. It would just kind of depend on what, what it is you were gonna use. Tags, like I said, tags work really well for this. One of my favorite makers um, where I actually got this idea is, uh, my clue is Susie. Um, shabby soul and she uses tags all the time to make her books like this and they're so cute they're so fun so now we have the base of our little book so then it can flip this way and then went this way and then it will open back up and go back the other direction. So now that I have all of my hinges on, <laughs> I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine and to make sure that this is on nice and secure, I'm gonna just zip back and forth um, down each of these. Now, if you do not have a sewing machine, this will still be okay. You just wanna give it some time to dry before you move on to the next step but I think it does look really cool to have it sewn. So I'm gonna just really quick zip back and forth over the um, fabric and I'll be right back. 
Okay, I am back and I did my stitching. So it's a lot more stable now that it does have the stitching. Or again, you can let it dry and then if you wanna make it super secure, if you're not gonna sew, you can add two more of the flaps on the back and then it will be super stable. But for this, it's not huge paper, so I feel like it would be fine if you didn't sew and just had the flaps if you let it dry. And then you can decide if you want to cut off your strings or not. And so, yeah. Okay, so that's basically the base of what I have here. I just made mine a little bit longer. And then after that, I went and I glued on different pieces of Tim Holtz papers uh, and then some of them I ripped and made as pockets and then the fabric. So I'm just going to glue on some of the fabric that I have here. Alright, so then we have that and I still have some of the dictation paper with the um, that I did the same smushing technique with and then I ran it through my die cut machine with the Tim Holtz flower die. And then this has all these little, little bits. <laughs> I just want some like contrasting colors. I wanted to show you is in this book I used some of the um, the negative parts to decorate as well. So let's take just some of this and I just kind of ripped it like this. And then kind of, you can just kind of collage it where you want onto your book. So don't throw away your out, out your outer bits, <laughs> your negative bits, because I think it makes a really fun addition to the book. Okay, so then once you have kind of your base, you can then add, go crazy, right? But that's also after I added my base, then that's when I went on. And for me, I layered on the flowers next and the, um, the people figured out where my pockets were going to be and then added the goodies on top of that. So at this stage, this is just, you can go and, you know, go to town. So let me take a few minutes. I'm going to gussy, gu gussy it up a little bit and I'll be right back. All right. I am back. I decorated. So let me give you kind of a look at what I did. I added, I, <laughs> I didn't add a ton of the um, backdrop paper, but I did come in with some ephemera. I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> so I made a little pocket here with some little tickets and layered up some ephemera there, added another flower that I found there. Um, and then I did do the stitching around the edges after I was pretty happy with the ephemera. And then I folded a ticket over here. And then here's the next page. I used one of the Tim Holtz um, clips, added some more of that periodic table. A couple of these um, layered up for my, my Tuck spot. And over here, I just love this constant attention, you know, your garden. <laughs> and then here, I just made a little tuck with little pieces, little pieces there. And then some of Corey's buttons that she sent. I use some of my Tim Holtz stamps throughout it. I go to this page and this is the back and there's my little dangle. And I used some of that stencil like I used in the other one. And then with my scraps, I took my scraps and ripped them and just stitched them together. And this became now like a little tag. And then this is actually from right here from the roll. So I wanted to add a little bit more of that for my five things. And here I made another one of those little scrappy bits. Did some stamping on the back. This little clock piece is now a tuck spot. Some of that fabric I stamped on. I added a little piece there, and there's one of the flowers from before. That just kind of slides in there. More of that stencil and the flowers. Here it's one of those junk drawer pieces. And then here, at one point this was gonna be my cover until I remembered, oh man, I need my um, 
closure. So this is now the back page, but at one point it was going to be the front. And this is one of the numbers that uh, Corey sent with her bags. And then again, I made another one of this little scrappy tags, did stamp it on the back. All right, so that is what it looks like so far. And then now I want to do my closure. So before my closure, where's my front, was the, the pull part of the roll, right? Which I've cut off. And so I wanted to still use some of the uh, piano paper. So I decided to cut off the end of the box. So that's what I have here. And I just love that it has text on it. So this is going to become my closure. I think I'm gonna add it here. And then I'm still gonna have my ribbon wrapped this way. And then in my stash, I have a bunch of these that I've been meaning to use. And they're the ribbon uh, ends or closure ends. I'm sure there's a name, but I have tons of different sizes. So I found one that would fit pretty close. All right, so I'm gonna use these to kind of smush the metal piece down. Kind of just give this a smush. That is nice and snug. And then I can add this here. Okay, after playing with it for a little bit, I decided I didn't like the green. It was just too bright and didn't really go with this. So I found this little itty bitty one and it fits better in um, the little opening for the ribbon. So I am going to use this. I think this one will wrap this way and then this way. This way and then this way we can tie a little bow or a knot here. And it looks kind of like a little package bundle. <laughs> we could just kind of leave it like that. I think that's kind of cute. I'm could tie a bow, but I think it looks really cute just like that. And so there is our five item swap. So just to make sure I used my five, let's just take a quick little look one last time. So one, the piano box um, on the side, two, the cards, three, the fabric that's holding it together, four, uh, we used the dictation paper, and five embellishments with the um, the fabric, and then, you know, bonus with the buttons. <laughs> All right, so fun. All right, thank you so much for joining me, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. All right, I hope you have a wonderfully crafty day. Bye-bye.